Hi there, gang. Father PJ here. I feel badly that I'm not going to be able to be with you for these last couple of weeks of Lent, but the staff and I have worked together to provide something that I think you're going to find really helpful uh, and that has been really helpful for me. We're going to do the Stations of the Cross, but not in the ordinary way, walking through the church. Rather, we're going to take you through the Stations of the Cross at your own home. This uh, really kind of came together in the course of some communion calls that Father George and I were making to some of you that are still stuck at home. I was talking to someone who had fallen three times already the day that I arrived at the house, and I thought, our Lord falling three times on the way to the cross. And then later that same day, I wound up sitting at the kitchen table of my father's house and remembering how I used to get scolded there. And I thought, the first station, condemnation. I want us to be able to bring the stations home because the stations of the cross themselves, St. Francis brought back from Jerusalem so that the people in Italy could experience what it was like to go on pilgrimage there. I want us to bring the stations of the cross into our home both to sanctify the space that we live in, but even more so that as you go through the course of your day and you experience life's ups and downs, you can see them for what they are because you'll have already prayed over them there, a share in the sufferings of Jesus. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I want to begin our reflection on the Stations of the Cross at home here in our front yard, courtyard area. Maybe you have a, a backyard patio that would be better suited for this sort of thing. And remember, as we go through each of the rooms, if you don't have a room, simply, just like one in my house, uh, use the one that feels best for you. But just reflect on some of the same themes. Out here in this courtyard with our grill and our garden space and a place for our, our kids to play, I want us to reflect on Jesus being condemned to death. He would have been condemned and tried. We see him walk through a courtyard much like this, although larger and probably more grandiose. It's where the apostles wait to see what happens. It's where Peter denies Jesus is in a place just like this. A place where we gather with friends, <clears throat> have a meal, cook a dinner. This place where we want to reflect on Jesus being condemned to death because without that condemnation that he suffers, we couldn't enjoy all of this. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Here in the entryway, we look at the second station. Jesus takes up his cross. Right here is where we leave our homes for the day. We walk out our front door and we're called to take up our cross to bring Jesus to the world around us. So it's in this space that we want to reflect on the station where Jesus takes up his cross to bring his love to us. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're here on the landing of my staircase to reflect on Jesus and how, as he carries his cross, he falls. We'll be here for all three of the times Jesus falls. The first time Jesus falls is right at the beginning of his journey. His human body is not the weight of the cross, nor the weight of all the sins that he's bearing. And so he collapses. I don't think I've collapsed at all on these stairs, but I felt the weight of being a father, carrying my children up these stairs, or carrying them down when they're too tired themselves. We can't make the journey to the cross by ourselves, so Jesus takes us with him. And yes, while he falls, each one of the falls serves to show us that we're going to fall on our journey too. And that's okay. We get back up. 
we seek the aid of others. We keep pressing forward to the goal God has in mind for us. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're here in the kitchen for Jesus meets his mother. When I grew up, a lot of the conversations we had, my mom and I, were at our kitchen table. We, we didn't really have a, a dining room so to speak. It was sort of like the layout of this house where the dining room table is just off of the main kitchen. A lot of our conversations, a lot of growing and learning happened in, in that kitchen and at that table. I think of my mom making bread when I think of the kitchen. I think of the dinners that we shared, the lunches she packed for us as kids going to school. When we would get home, it was often the first place we'd go to grab a snack or sit at the kitchen table and do homework with mom. Our artwork, much like this, was hung up on the fridge or on the pantry. When I think of the kitchen, I, I feel home and I think of my parents. Reflect on your relationship with your parents as you spend time reflecting on Jesus meeting his mother on his final walk towards the cross. How much you love them, what you would want to say to them, and what you've learned from them. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. Adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're here in the sort of living room, playroom area of our home. I've chosen this sort of living space as the place to reflect on Simon of Cyrene helping Jesus bear his cross because it's often in places like this where we meet others who are going to help us along our journey. Many cups of coffee have been shared at this table and at this couch. Many late nights with friends watching movies or having a movie night with family. Board games played on the table. All of these things are with folks who will help us along our journey to Christ. When we spend time with others, we should be looking for ways to bring Christ to them in our words and our deeds. We should be like Simon, helping them carry their crosses as they go on their journey towards Jesus. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Here we are in the master bathroom. We want to use this place to reflect on Veronica, wiping the face of our Lord. She comforts him and cleanses him, shows him dignity and respect that he has otherwise not seen today come to places like this to wash off the ache and the hurt from the day or to ready ourselves for what we have to do. Jesus has been ready for what he's doing right now. Veronica comes, kind of like that warm shower at the end of a long day that's refreshing and relaxing. It's the last moment of refreshment Jesus is going to experience before his crucifixion. The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're here again on the stairwell. Jesus has just fallen the second time. It's right after he meets Veronica, and she refreshes him by wiping away the dirt and grime from his brow. Jesus is brought to his knees by the kindness of another person in his most needed hour. We're called to be that kind to those around us, that our kindness would bring them to their knees because they would see the love of Christ that we give to them. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. In the world. We're here in the dining room as we reflect on Jesus meeting the women of Jerusalem. These women are friends and, and colleagues of Jesus, folks that he has known and he has taught. We often meet with our friends and, and our families around dining tables much like this one to share meals, to share lessons, to share life. And Jesus has done that with these women. That's why they're weeping when they see him carrying his cross. They know who he is, they know what a good man he is, and they know how wrong it is that he's being condemned to death. Reflect on our time spent with our friends as we meditate on this station. And reflect how we can mourn with them the death of Christ and how we can celebrate with them Easter Sunday. The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're here again for the third time that Jesus falls. It's after he meets the women of Jerusalem and they're sorrowful. Jesus falls a third time because his body is exhausted and his heart now feels the sorrow of those who will miss his presence as he lays in the tomb awaiting the resurrection on Easter Sunday. We should fall to our knees in sadness and thank God for the sacrifice he's about to make. The tenth station, Jesus is divested of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Here we are in the master bedroom. This is where we go to relax, to end our day, to change out of our work clothes into our recreation. Here, let's reflect on Jesus being stripped of his garments as it's sort of the polar opposite of what goes on in a room like this, that, that is the most home, the home can be, it's in your own room. Jesus is stripped of all of his dignity. He has no time to rest. It's coming close to the end now. We often end our days here. Jesus ends his days on earth following stations and let's reflect on the humility of our Lord as he is humiliated and having his robe stripped from him and let's reflect on that in the place where we are most comfortable because this is one of the times when Jesus is most uncomfortable the 11th station Jesus is nailed to the cross we adore you O Christ and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Here, this is my youngest child's room. We see her small bed and dresser with clothes, a pile of stuffed animals. I want us to reflect on Jesus being nailed to the cross here in this room of a child. That might sound strange, but to anyone who is a parent, you know, you die to yourself in order to raise your children. You have to die to those desires and wants in your heart so that the desires and wants and successes in their hearts can flourish. We're reflecting in this room about the Jesus beginning his journey to death nailed to the cross. Each one of those nails in his hands and his feet is a sign of his love for us, his children, just as the sacrifices that we make are signs of love for our own children. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed
youngest child's room, we reflected on Jesus being nailed on the cross. And here, the room of my eldest, with her stuffed animals, her toys strewn about the room, we reflect on the death of Jesus. Because again, it is in loving another person that we must die to ourselves in order to fully love them, just like any parent loves their child. Third station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you in Christ and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're here on the sort of back patio for one of the final stations. Jesus is taken down from the cross. I chose this sort of back patio area because it's an area where most folks in our neighborhood don't, we don't spend a lot of time back here, at least in our house. There's not much going on. There's not much to do back here and it's quiet. Jesus is taken down from the cross and handed to his mother and it's not a place anyone wants to be. No one wants to be at this moment where our Lord has just died. His mother doesn't want to be at the place where her son's life was taken from him. John doesn't want to be where his teacher and his friend has just suffered the greatest loss. But this is where we need to be. We needed this because it's what allows us to live our lives as God intends us to live. As heartbreaking and as awful as it is to be at the foot of the cross, it is the, greatest, the place of greatest love, so it's the place we need the most. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We're here in one of the final stations. Jesus is laid in his tomb. Here we're reflecting in my garage where it's dusty, it's musty, it's damp. There's things that are in here to be stored for later use. Jesus is placed in a place much like this. In the tomb, it's damp. It's dusty, it's musty, it's cold, and it's quiet. And here, Jesus is laid to rest as we await his coming at Easter. I hope that our walk through the Stations of the Cross in your home has been helpful and instructive, especially during these days of Lent. It's important to remember the Stations aren't about a particular booklet. They're not even about the pictures precisely. The books, the prayers, the pictures, they're all meant to get us to meditate more profoundly on the suffering of Jesus and to connect our suffering with his. That's why we end the stations back at the altar where we began, because it's here that the suffering and death of Jesus is made manifest, that the resurrected Lord is given to his people. And so we end with the words of among the most ancient Paschal hymns. We worship your cross, O Lord. We praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For the wood of the cross brings joy to the world.